Hello and welcome to part 5 of this tutorial on how to create a full stack website using MongoDB, Express, React, and Node. In this part, we'll test our user login route in Postman and then keep working on the backend, where we'll create a blog model, our blog controllers, and our routes. So let's get started. Inside Postman, I'll add a request to our user collection. This will be a post request to slash API slash user slash login. The description will be login user and get info. Switch the request type to post and then put in our URL. So we're at localhost 5000 slash API slash user slash login. Now for the body, we want to send some raw JSON. I'll create an object with braces and pass in the email I created. And I'll pass in the wrong password at first so you see we get this error. But once I put the right password and send a request, we get our token and we're logged in. I might add a delete request to remove a user, but we don't need it for now. So I'll just add this comment inside our user controller file and come back to it. Now inside our models folder, I'll create a blog.js file. Require mongoose. Now create a blog schema constant and we'll set that to a new mongoose.schema where we'll pass in an object. Here we need to define what our blog will have, so first I'll give it a title. Its type will be a string and we'll set required to true. I'll copy this down three times. Now rename the second entry to image, the third to description, and the fourth to content. These will all be strings and they'll be required. We'll also set timestamps to true so we record the date when a blog is created. Now set module.exports to blog and set blog to a mongoose.model with blog as the first param and blog schema as the second. We're done with the blog model, so inside our controllers folder, I'll create a blog controllers.js file. I noticed I spelled my user controllers file wrong. I didn't add the S. I want this to be plural because we have a few different controllers for each model. I'll fix the user controllers import inside the user routes file. Now back to our blog controllers. Require express async handler as async handler. Require our blog model. And I'll create another comment for our next controller, so this will be a get request at slash API slash blog. The description is get all blog posts. Now create a get all blogs constant and set that to our async handler. 
create an async arrow function, then pass in request and response as params. In the function body, create a page size constant and set that to a JavaScript number. And we'll pass in requests.query.pageSize. We want to limit how many blog posts we get back per page, and we'll be doing that with query parameters. If we don't get that number, we'll set the default to 10. Now we also need to record what page we're on, so create a page number constant and set that to a number. Pass in request.query.pageNumber. And if we don't get that, we'll set the default to 1, which is the first page. Next, create a count constant and set that to await blog.countDocuments. That will tell us how many blogs there are. Then create a blogs constant and set that to await blog.find. Now we'll add on dot .limit with page size as the param and then add dot skip. Inside the parentheses, we'll do some math to check how many posts we need to skip. So pass in page size, and we'll multiply that by page number minus 1. Next, send a res.json with an object as the parameter. First, we'll send our blogs then page number, and we want to send back how many pages there are so we can sort through them later. So set pages to math.seal, and inside the parentheses we'll divide the count by the page size. Now we'll start our next controller. I'll create another comment, and for the description it will fetch a single blog and it's a get request at slash API slash blog slash colon ID. So the ID will be a URL parameter that we'll send with each request. With Mongoose, we have an underscore ID created with every model entry, and that's what we'll use. Create a get blog by ID constant and set that to the async handler. Create an async arrow function, then pass in request and response as params. Inside the function body, we'll create a blog constant. Set that to await blog.findById and pass in request.params.id. Next, create an if check, and inside the parentheses, we'll check if we found a blog. If we did, we'll send a res.json and pass in the blog. Else, we'll send a res.status of 404 and throw a new error displaying blog not found. We're done with this controller, so I'll create another comment down below. This will be a delete request at slash API slash blog slash ID. So we're still using that URL parameter to access a specific blog. And for the description, it will delete a single blog. The route will be private and only available to admins. Now create a delete blog constant and set that to our async handler. Create an arrow function then pass in request and response. Create a blog constant and set that to await blog.findbyid and pass in request.params.id. Now create an if check to check if we have our blog. If we do, we'll await blog.remove and then send a res.json with a message of blog removed. Else, we'll send a res.status of 404 and throw a new error displaying blog not found. And we're done with this controller. Now I'll create another comment, 
and this route will be a post request at slash API slash blog. The description is it will create a new blog post. And I still want this to be admin protected. Now make a create blog constant and set that to the async handler. Create an async arrow function, then pass in request and response as params. Create a blog constant and set that to a new blog. Pass in an object, and here we'll set up some default information that each blog will have when it's created. We can change this info with the update controller that we'll make next. I'll give it a title of sample title, and I'll do the same thing with image, content, and description. Below that, we'll make a created blog constant and set that to await blog.save. Now send a res.status of 201 and add some JSON with the created blog. We're done with this controller, so I'll add another comment down below. This will be a put request at slash API slash blog. And for the description, it will update a blog post. Now create an update blog constant and set that to the async handler. Create an async arrow function, then pass in request and response. Inside the function body, we'll pull title, image, content, and description out of the request.body. Now create a blog constant and set that to await blog.findbyid and pass in the request.params.id. We'll check if we have our blog, so create an if check. And if we do, we'll set the blog.title to the title we got from the request.body. Then we'll do the same for blog.image, blog.description, and blog.content. Below the if check, create an updated blog constant and set that to await blog.save. Then send a res.status of 201 and some JSON with the updated blog as a param. Now create our module.exports object, so export all our controller functions. We're done with the blog controller, so now to create the routes. Inside our routes folder, create a blog routes.js file, require express, now create the router constant and set that to express.router. Require the protect and admin middleware. Then all of our controllers. Now create a router instance and add dot route. The first route will just be a slash. We'll add the dot get request and pass in our get all blogs controller. Add a dot post request and we'll need our middleware so pass in protect 
admin, and then the create blog controller. Now create another router instance. The route will be at slash colon ID. Then the update blog controller. Add a dot get request and pass in the get blog by ID controller. This will be a public route. Add a dot delete request and pass in our middleware, then the delete blog controller. Now set our module.exports equal to router, and we're done here. Inside the server.js file, I'll require our blog routes. Now down where we add our user routes, I'll do the same with blog routes. Except for this, the main route is at slash API slash blog. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.